Good morning, viewers of this channel. Welcome to my review of the Halo Infinite campaign. I am Blade Burger, and I will be your humble, totally not biased reviewer today. Make sure to do the things the algorithm likes. Now sit back, relax, grab a drink in your favorite marketable Halo mug, and let's get into the review. Halo Infinite. Easily the most anticipated game all year. Good and bad anticipation. Good, because it's the first new Halo game to the main series in six years. The return of Chief and the exploration of the most lore-intensive Halo ring in the entire franchise. The bad anticipation, with people expecting it to be terrible, is based on last year's preview, which honestly looked fine, and the treatment 343 has given to the Halo series for its mainline games. Halo 4 was decent, with a good campaign and a okay multiplayer. And Halo 5? Yeah, it was pretty. It looked good. But that was about it. Awful campaign and a pretty poor multiplayer really made it seem that 343 didn't understand Halo. Didn't understand what the fans wanted. I can very confidently say, as someone who grew up on Halo, that this game is a magnificent return to form. Just from the opening cutscenes alone, I knew that 343 had it. There was no over-the-top mess like Halo 5's opening cutscene, just a perfect introduction to the story. Let's talk about the story. I will try to avoid spoilers, but if there is some, I will clearly mark them and where you can skip to not hear it if you don't like spoilers. Let's get into it. The campaign was excellent. I loved every moment of it. The pilot and the weapon were great new characters that added a lot to the story. The pilot, while a bit annoying at times, really developed well into a character I enjoyed. His nervous attitude towards everything Chief did got a bit overdone at times, but those moments didn't really happen as much as other reviewers say it did. The weapon was a worthy replacement for Cortana, keeping a positive attitude even as things got rough. The Harbinger was intimidating. Her voice actress did a knockout performance, one that makes me excited for how she does Sabathun when the Witch Queen launches in February. The major sore spot in this main cast was, sadly, Eshram, the main villain. We've seen this type of villain a million times before. Big burly villain who thinks he's stronger than the main character, yells about how he wants a fair fight, yada yada yada. We've seen it a million times. Eh. They did it better than a lot of them out there here, however. He didn't intimidate me as much as the Harbinger, but Eshram felt like he had more going on than big dumb strong guy. Small spoiler, however, which I will mark. I was surprised he didn't play more into his apparent lung issues. He was wheezing, coughing, and nearly fell over in a cutscene due to his lung issues. They never really did anything with that. I was expecting more. Small disappointment, but his boss fight made up for it. Spoiler over. Back to the topic. The grunts were probably my favorite part. They truly went full shitpost with the grunts, with very memorable dialogue and hilarious quotes. Here's a few that I totally didn't steal from online. I haven't even heard all of them yet, yet I see many clips online of new ones that are funny. And now, back to the story. Each mission was pretty well written, with a clear start, goal, and and hook to the next one that plopped you back into the open world. The story had good pacing. It didn't feel too long like Borderlands 3 story and wasn't too short like Beyond Light story. I would have liked it to be longer, but it was fine where it was. The plot twists and big moments were very memorable and some even brought a tear to my eye. The only real issue I had is that the ending was such a big cliffhanger. I won't go into spoilers, but it just ends with a, such a big hook that it's clear that there's going to be multiple expansions to come. One has been named, actually. I won't say it here, but they've already, doing, they've already named the first expansion. I say good. I'm okay with more Halo and more open world, which perfectly segues us into the next segment, the open world. <laughs> Almost like I intentionally did that. I am so clever. Many, including myself, were very skeptical when it was announced that Infinite would be open world. I didn't see it as something that could work well, given Halo's traditional linear level design from the past games. How well did it work here? I think it worked amazingly here. The world wasn't very diverse in its biomes or anything, but it made up for it in the sheer verticality of the mountains and ridges and cliffs and chasms and caves and structures. It's insane just how good the world looks and how fun it is to traverse. 3 for 3 please make the entire world forgeable when Forge launches. Anyway, the open world is a very nice addition to the franchise, and one that I'm glad to know will develop and change as the game goes on for its 10 year lifespan. Oh my god, 10 years. It seems like a lot. 
Destiny 2 has only been out for four, and it's already removing content that we paid for already. I'm hoping that 343 don't take that path, as this campaign is good enough to make me want to play it again. And the file size is pretty small, as because Bungie uses that excuse all the time. Hey, the file size, and the file size, who cares about file size? Anyways, the open world is filled to the brim with stuff to goof off and do. A ton of FOBs to capture, armor lockers to find, marines to rescue and kill five minutes later, high value targets to take down, and so much more. I'm surprised at how full and alive the world feels a lot in this game. Enemies placed in the highest of mountains, easter eggs all over, audio logs everywhere, and so much to explore and so much to find. If there's anything I love about open worlds, it's the joy of just wandering off into the woods like a maniac as I try to find each and every collectible there is to be found. I did the first few campaign missions until it plopped you into the open world, then didn't do another mission until I had cleared the area of any and all collectible and optional objectives. It was a very enjoyable time. <laughs> I didn't even get every Spartan Corps by the time I finished the campaign, and I'm just getting the urge as I type the script and voice it. Amazing open world. Good job, 3 for 3 Now let's talk about the campaign sandbox and how that played. My thoughts on the sandbox are pretty similar to my thoughts in the multiplayer preview that I did. The bulldog was unusable, the disruptor was bad, the pulse carbine and stalker rifle were actually good this time, however, when it came to the campaign. I actually used the stalker rifle quite a lot when I ran out of ammo in my mangler. I do want to highlight the mangler in particular as it carried me through the campaign. It was just too good to let go of, and the ribbon variant you get from a high value target was just so much better. It made a lot of the harder levels later on, because yes, the game does get harder as it goes on, much easier to do. It one shot skimmers, jackals, grunts, and sometimes even brutes. The sentinel beam was also very strong, melting even those annoying white armor elites with the health of hunters. As for equipment, the bad just got worse and the good got better. The drop wall and thrusters were useless to the point of actually hurting my chances of winning. The threat sensor got a lot better during the campaign, helping me see invisible elites and gauging the health of hunters when upgraded. When I say invisible elites, I do mean invisible elites. This has got to be the best active camo they've done for enemies in this series. The threat sensor is very good at helping to do with them. Now, let's talk about the bosses. I won't have any footage, as some consider that a spoiler, so instead you get footage of me running around like a madman. The bosses were all good. Each one wasn't unfair or required a specific strategy to be. It was all open-ended. You could shoot them, throw grenades, chuck plasma coils, or melee the shit out of them. I typically just found as many plasma coils as I can and threw them. So fun. There was a good amount of boss fights in this game, all very fun. I did die to a few of them, but I never got mad or frustrated with them. The only downside I would say is that they were all they were all human sized, or around that size. No big grand monster to fight, no giant enemy that was five times my height. Hopefully in the next expansion, maybe, I don't know. Overall, this game was fantastic. A new high for the Halo franchise after the disappointing Halo 5. Definitely excited for what the team at 3 for 3 are going to do with this game. Overall, I give it a 9.75 out of 10. Clearly not biased at all, nope. I hope you enjoy this review. Terraria videos resume next Wednesday. See you all in the next one. Blade Burger out.